Call to order City of Cannon Falls City Council meeting for Tuesday, April 16th. Uh, if I could get a roll call. Gesme. Here. Groot. Here. Jepson. Here. Johnson. Here. Rundberger. Here. Lundell. Here. And Montgomery here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. If I could get a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Motion from Diane. I'll second. Second from Lisa. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries. Uh, nobody signed up for public input, so we will skip number five and go straight to our public hearing. Uh, the public hearing tonight is 72nd Avenue Way and the improvements. Uh, open up the public hearing right away? Yes. All right. Oh, public. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. I will have a presentation to start. Okay. If you'd like to lead off with your presentation. Sure, so I'll, I'll move to the point in a second, but how that'll work is I'll give the presentation and then afterwards uh, uh, you'll ask for public comments and then people will get to give their comments and then you'll close the public hearing. Uh, then you can ask questions and you'll have uh, uh, two resolutions in your council packet. All right. So with that, I will slide up to the podium. Take your time. Thanks, Bill. So, well, thank you, Mayor Council. All right, uh, so 72nd Avenue Way, this is our second hearing. Uh, so we did have a first hearing here in March. Uh, I'm sorry, last fall, we had a council action in March to set this. Uh, so what we're following tonight is Minnesota Statute 429. Our ultimate goal tonight is to pass two resolutions. Uh, the first one would be to, to accept the project or accept the, uh, the assessment amounts, thereby levying them for everybody. And secondly, it would be awarding a contract. So some things we have to go through uh, by statute. So our outline tonight is in the project area, talk about again what who's being assessed, uh, the improvements of what we're doing, uh, the costs, uh, our schedule. Uh, this is this is the meeting where someone would uh, be able to appeal. So by statute, we have to review that. We have to tell people how they appeal. You are the appeal board tonight. So if someone would like to appeal, uh, they would have to present uh, later tonight. But lastly, the comments. Okay, so project area. So this is 72nd Avenue Way. Uh, the highlighted properties are the properties that are being proposed to be assessed. Uh, so these are the people that did receive uh, notice uh, of tonight's meeting. Okay, the improvements. Uh, so this is again consistent with what you guys have already heard. Uh, so we'll be, we will be constructing street pavement. Uh, we will be adding curb and gutter. Uh, typically, we call that an urban section, meaning we don't have ditches. Uh, the street width will be 32 feet from back curb to back curb, consistent with our city standard. Uh, the utilities being you know, sanitary sewer and water, they were installed some time ago, so they're already in. So the only utilities we're adding is we're adding a little bit of storm sewer. Uh, the storm sewer had a previous pond on the east side. It's now going to be incorporated. The stormwater treatment will be incorporated in that of Hardwood States. Okay. People are not being assessed uh, for stormwater treatment. Okay, that is being included in the Harvard States project. Likewise, the turn lane uh, that is being installed, and that's required us to install. Uh, the highway there is also not being assessed. That is being incorporated into uh, the Harvard States project. Okay, and then lastly, uh, we are uh, adding sidewalk on the west side uh, of the road as well. Okay. Uh, the costs, so the total, total project costs are $300,000. And uh, you know, we had a lot of discussion about this. Uh, this, by your ordinance, is a 100% assessable project. Okay, What that means is that anytime something that goes in for the first time, be it curb, gutter, sidewalks, or water, etc., you typically are, your ordinance says to assess 100%. Uh, I think we all recognize those were pretty large numbers. We did have a lot of discussion at our council meeting. We followed that up with a council workshop. 
uh, the city council did provide direction to staff to reduce that amount. Okay? And the direction was to reduce that to 50%. So that is what uh, we have done. We've prepared the assessments based on that 50% based on the previous direction. That means we would be assessing $150,000 to the properties. Uh, that gives an assessment, I'm sorry, reduce from 150, that gives an assessment range from about 3,500 uh, to the high end of about 29,000. Okay, that 3,500 is a little misleading because that's actually just a little sliver of land the city owns. So most of the assessments are actually in the you know, 10, 10 to 30,000 dollar range. Okay, what that breaks out to per cost per foot, uh, we do things exact at this point because we have exact numbers, uh, $139.93 per foot. So roughly 140 bucks a foot. Uh, we also like to remind people that the City of Camp Falls does offer, offer a deferral program. So if you're a senior citizen, you're permanently disabled, uh, active military deferrals, they are available. Uh, to do that, we have you contact Sarah at City Hall. Uh, you can do that as well as prepay all the way to November 15th of this year. Okay? If you do not prepay, then they'll just automatically roll on to your, to your taxes. Uh, so uh, the interest rate, uh, you technically be setting that tonight as part of the resolution that you pass, but uh, previously uh, you directed us uh, that we typically do 10 years we're with Neil, and the interest rate is typically set at, or your ordinance is actually two percentage points over the bond buyer's index, which would be uh, higher than this, uh, but we felt uh, the previous off drive assessment we discussed with the council that we would match that interest rate because you're not financing this project. so. Uh, you will be offering a lower interest rate uh, than what you could at 4%. Okay, okay uh, schedule. So just again, a reminder, we had that original hearing last fall, November 21st, we opened the bids on uh, March 13th. Uh, the final assessment hearing is tonight. So again, uh, the council will be acting on a resolution to award that uh, contract. Uh, our low bidder is the same bidder for Hardwood Estates. Uh, they have stated they would like to get going uh, as soon as possible. So what do I think that means? Probably in the next couple of weeks. But uh, they went off contracts. Well, we don't have a contract awarded. We don't have contract signed. So there's a few steps we have to take. Uh, yeah, if you approve that tonight. And then our scheduled, uh, I'm sorry, our contracted completion date is September 27th. All right, so that's all our, that's all our background, our information. Uh, so we do. Uh, we are required to review statutory items. So these I'm going to more read it than I am going to explain. Uh, so first off is written objections are considered at the hearing tonight. So at this point I always ask Sarah, Sarah, have we received any written objections? No, we have not. Okay, so no written objections. Uh, historically you do allow uh, people to object, uh, and come up to the podium and object as well. Uh, but this is the time that you have to present your evidence of why you're objecting to this. The statute says that your property needs to be worth, uh, must benefit from this project. So whatever we assess your product, property has to be worth more, uh, more by that amount after this project. So if someone's gonna contest it, they have to present evidence to, to you for you to consider. Okay, uh, so tonight you are the appeal body, but there's also a second appeal. Someone can appeal the decision to the council. They do that 30 days, uh, they may appeal to district court uh, by serving notice upon the mayor or the clerk. Okay, if that would happen, uh, the clerk would furnish inf the appropriate information. So that's a certified copy of the objections, assessment proceedings, assessment role, and all necessary papers. So if someone did that, then Sarah would uh, provide that information to them. Okay, so what would happen then is if they did appeal, uh, the courts would either affirm the assessment or set it aside or, or a reassessment. Okay, one of the things that uh, is, I like to remind, remind citizens is this is not a you win your appeal or don't win, you get zero or amount. What typically happens is you be reassessed or the assessment amount will be changed. Okay, it does not go away. So just want to make sure people understand that. Uh, and also, the second item if someone does appeal, the appellant does not prevail upon them. Uh, prevail. The costs incurred shall be taxed, so the city costs. So, again, we're not trying to dissuade people that if someone does appeal and they would lose, the city can then uh, recover their costs from that person. So, uh, that's something people need to consider.
consider for appeal. And then lastly, all objections to this set, uh, assessment shall be deemed waived unless presented such appeal. So that's tonight. So this is this is the end of the proceedings. So after tonight, we will initiate um, contracts. Uh, we will move forward with construction, and uh, there's no more appeal for assessment. It's basically now we're until your payment terms. Uh, with that, Mayor, that is the end of the presentation. So I will move back to my desk uh, for the comment section. All right. Thank you, Bill. So the public hearing for 72nd Avenue Way improvements is officially open. If anybody would like to speak in public hearing. Hi, uh, Mike Eltoff. I'm here representing Marlin and Cindy Hughesby, 30339 72nd Avenue Way. Um, they're elderly, they're in their 90s, can't hear, get around too well. So I'm gonna come and speak on their behalf again like I did um, late last year for them as well. Um, I mean, we do object. We, we made that clear, I think, at the last meeting um, on where the assessments are for their property right now. Um, one, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly confused on why we're doing this right now. The last road project we did, we did this hearing and assessment appeal at the end of the project when we had all the expenses in. So we're doing it on the estimates, I believe, at this point. Um, so I, I guess I'm confused on why we're doing it that way. I suppose it's probably still following stat statute, but I know in the last project we did, we did this at the end of the project when we had the exact cost of that project and then they could come in and appeal it at that point. So, um, so I do wanna make that known that we are doing this off of cost estimates right now. Um, our first, I guess, problem with this is, is, so my grandparents are the only ones left of the original annexed people on 72nd Avenue Way. And we talked about last fall, I know, and a lot of people said that it's, it's handshake agreements and conversations, and they don't count, right? Like they, they were originally annexed in on the promise that they would pay nothing, you know, that the street was going to get improved, the utilities and were going to be run down 72nd Avenue Way. That was supposed to be a dead end on the original development, but they were going to make it a city street, and since the stuff was going to be there, they were going to be a part of the city water and sewer as a part of it. And then at their expense, they could hook up to it. You know, they could hire a contractor, dig up their yard, crush their septics, cap their wells, and they knew that part going into it. Um, so I do have, one thing I do have, I have the commitment letter. So I, I've done data requests from the city. I've done some digging on my own. Um, did a data request to the Cannon Falls Township. Just kind of how did this all pan out over the years and when they were annexed. Um, the one thing on the commitment letter that reads is, um, They'd be committed to extending utilities across Highway 19 south on 72nd Avenue Way, which would include street improvements necessary to the expense of the development. Right? I mean, that's, that's signed, dated. As part of This was part of the discussion on selling Cannon Falls Township on the annexation. Because Cannon Falls Township didn't want to give up the residents because they knew it was going to be expensive for them, right? And that that's... This is the meeting my grandparents remember is because they didn't want to be there and also have to pay forty thousand dollars because Cannon Falls wanted to make a development, right? And I, I think they're exactly right by that. You know, why would they take on expense because we wanted to add taxpayers to the role? Um, even in the resolution, which is Resolution fifteen ninety eight, um, that's one that was approved eventually then by the council. Um, even in there, it says that city water and sewer would be provided to them and then they could hook up at their expense you know that's in the resolution well this development failed this was going to be the first one done by what's their name cbdc whatever they were back in the day and then everything went stagnant which if you go i have meeting minutes from the council sessions that the council had a work session on this back in like 2005 i believe it was same with camp falls township i have their meeting minutes as well and we had a joint session with them both, and with Stanton Township at the time, because we were trying to take stuff from Stanton Township at that time as well. Um, all the comments were worried about taking this one because it was going to fail. Everybody just knew it was going to fail, because every other one we were doing at that time, we had like three of them that failed all in that same few years. And they wanted to see those happen first before they grabbed my grandparents and the city, grabbed my grandparents, and then had that one fail as well. Only for the reason they didn't want to pay city taxes for 10 or 15 years with no city services. Well, that's what happened. So if you do that math, which is pretty easy math, it, it, we'd say it's probably around $15,000 they paid for over a decade of excessive taxes. Because if you look on the tax roll, it doubled as soon as it became city residents. 
and you can do that math until they finally got city services. Um, so they, that, that's what we feel they paid extra in, extra in taxes of $15,000 already. And then they were assessed $14,304.87 by the city when they assessed them then for the water and the sewer. And during that whole time, they got billed for stormwater, which didn't change. It was just their normal ditches that they mowed, both sides. My grandpa's one mowed it, <laughs> and it drained into a MnDOT ditch. Um, so he maintained that the entire time, just because he's a perfectionist and likes his neighborhood to look good. Um, and then their welcome to the city letter, I'll back up this too, this is why it really went sour. So we annexed them, and that first year they were city residents was an election year. They came down, along with other residents of 71st, 77th Way to vote that year inside the city of Cannon Falls, and they were told to go home. They couldn't vote that year. They had no representation that year because the paperwork wasn't done yet. So that first year they were city residents, they didn't get to vote. You know, that still sticks with them. That was their welcome to Cannon Falls, right? Go home. So that's why this is sour to a lot of people out in that neighborhood still, because there are others that are still part of, on 71st Avenue Way that were part of the original annexation. And it paves the path for them, we believe, too, on what's going on here. Um, I'd like to speak on more on the behalf of 71st Avenue Way, but I do believe my grandparents fit in a unique situation that they were annexed in on a lot of promises, and they have paid. I mean, we, we came last fall to get the letter of like the 40 some thousand dollars, I think it was $44,000. So my grandpa did the math and he said, I'm almost at $90,000 now in expenses if this goes through because I'm a city resident now. He was a senior citizen when he annexed him. He's in his 90s now. I don't, this financial situation hasn't changed much except a lot of expense. Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of talk about precedence, right? Um, I mean, you can call the street out there an alley if you want. We paved every alley in town at no expense to the homeowners. We've never assessed anybody for alley paving in this town. That does them a great benefit to have a paved alley versus a gravel behind their house. We assessed everybody on Grove Street and the 500 block of Mill Street for Mill and Overlay back on the street project five years ago, six years ago, whenever that was. But then the north side of town, we did it for free for everybody. So I, I feel for the, the, the Cedar Hills residents, because you guys paid out your butts when you got annexed in, but it's all a moving dartboard. You know, I don't, I don't see a precedence anywhere with this, but I do see promises that were made. And that's what sold the township to allow it to happen. That's what sold the city to do it. And made my grandparents sit down and do that. Yeah, I feel good about this. They're gonna take care of us. Well, even in, by cutting it in half last fall, we're still pushing $70,000 in expenses. And then even in the original resolution, I'm still waiting. At, so a neighbor says they have it. I haven't got it yet. I wish I could bring that tonight. Original resolution says they could use their well and septic until it fails. Well, they crushed a perfectly fine septic system and capped off a perfectly good well because they were pressured by the city that said they had two years to hook up now that it's there. So they took that expense on and did it. Well, they didn't have to. You know, it's, it's right in the resolution 1598 that they can use theirs until it fails. So we're, we're a lot of money out of pocket right now. So they appreciated the half off. They're asking for half off on the entire part, right? So the $14,000 they already paid, and the $22,000 it's there, if you add those two figures together, they've already paid 14,000 of it, so whatever it brings it to half, that's what they want theirs adjusted to, to be happy about this. They feel they're meeting you in the middle, they feel that you guys are already meeting the rest of the residents in the middle by picking up half. So if we can do that, and, and my, you know, my quick math on that, I, I don't know what that brings it to, like $4,000, <laughs> you know? From there, I think they're 22, I believe, I don't, I, it's probably on one of the sheets there and what their address is assessed right now. But they want a discount. They've paid a lot. And they think they've been assessed for things they shouldn't have been assessed for. Um, they don't want to go to court. They don't want to argue anything like that. They don't want to file anything. They just, they just want to be met in the middle. And they think taking the two amounts, cutting them down the middle, like you've done with the rest of the street now, that's fair to them. Um, you know, I don't know if Greg's got their amount, what their assessment amount is, or if you guys got the packet. We could do that math real quick. But we were just, I was talking about on the phone because we actually weren't ready for this tonight. I knew it was coming, but. I see $24,067.16. Yeah. Is that the. Right. And this is meant, this is his opportunity to present evidence. This is not meant to be a back and forth. So this is present evidence. Right. So. Right. Well, now that I've got that figure. <laughs> so, you know, so $28,000. So that would put him at, I mean, pretty close to half already that, you know, I mean, it's, it's a, so I just said that $38,000, 
they've they paid half of that already you know I mean that's that's where they're at so that's what they're looking at they're looking at emotion I I don't want to do the math right in front of you tonight we can do that later I mean we can just put figures but I'm asking for emotion to take the amount that they were assessed by water and sewer the amount they're being assessed tonight they owe you half of that minus what they've already paid the fourteen thousand three hundred four dollars eighty seven cents so I'm sure Sarah or somebody could look up later here you know next week or whenever and figure that out and we can give the amount that's that's the fair shake they're asking for. They want to pay. They'll pay half, but they want to pay half of what they feel they owe, and that's that. So, that's that's the ask out of that property tonight on their behalf is take into account water and sewer that was supposed to be provided to them. Take into account they they know they need to pay. They know property value goes up because of this, um, but they're asking they they feel they've paid way more than their fair share already. And this is a fair share. This is better than meeting you guys in the middle <laughs> on their on their account. Um, but that's what they want. They want what they've been assessed, what they're being assessed, half of that minus what they've already paid. So that's their ask tonight. That that's what we would ask for for a motion tonight to proceed with with something like that. I'll rest my case there. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? Public hearing is still open. Second call for speaking during the public hearing of 72nd Avenue Way improvements. Third and final call. All right, public hearing is now closed. Uh, council, that gets us to resolution 2744, adopting the assessment. Um, I assume this is where we address. Yep, so, with, so within that, uh, Mr. Albrecht with the Hughes meet, so they did because they have filed an objection uh, when you entertain that resolution you do have to say state if you uh, uphold the assessment or if you'd like to change that so what you should consider is uh, mr. Albrecht the statute requires him to present evidence as to why the value I'm sorry all top I'm sorry all top my on behalf I'm of sorry his his grand grand. Grand. yep on behalf of his yep he would you would have to decide that he present evidence showing that the value of their property would not uh, be increased by the value of the assessment a uh, little background Neil and I I think Sarah helped us out we looked through uh, old information we did not see anything uh, that bound the city to previous agreements we cannot find anything to that effect uh, some of the documents that Mr. Altoff uh, referenced we did review as well uh, I'm not sure if you know, the city attorney would do that or not but we did not see anything that committed the city uh, to a value or a future value. I think, otherwise, I think those are all his opinions, so that's what your decision is. Did, did he present enough evidence? Okay. Council discussion, questions, comments? this concern the whole way along especially for the three homes on the west side that I, and I think you know there again I'll say I think the city did not do right by these people when we had exited in and if what Mike said is is true if we've got these resolutions that were passed by the city council just it doesn't feel right to me that um, that we're not honoring the fact that obviously his grandparents paid more than what they were should have according to the resolution you were quoting uh, for the water and water and sewer assuming the other two homes on that side probably did also but we don't have no, no resolutions were provided to us that showed that uh, the resolutions that we reviewed did not state that um, we did not find any commitment that bound the city uh, to future payment for the road so
Yeah, it, it, I don't this, think this, it was. This was provided by Campbell Township. Oh, the township. Yeah, so they would have. This was the developer selling the development to Campbell Township. This is making our promises. This is about the same. Derek's done looking at the, the sheet. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, concerns? My, my, my comment is <clears throat> probably uh, look, be looking in favor. Uh, I just I don't want to use peanuts as an example, but for twenty-four thousand dollars, the amount of time she's got. Gonna have a pretty darn nice, nice street in front of it. It's really gonna improve the, the looks of that whole property. Um, I can't see how it would not decrease his property value by that much. And the amount of money that we're splitting or whatever, the rest of what's going on the back, everybody else in, in the city. Probably didn't get the opportunity to get here. So done that cheap. So, uh, I guess I'm in favor of holding the way it is right now. Any other input from the council? Well, I think that's kind of what we've said all along is that this the typical thing is that this, this would fall on the developer. and. The developer failed, so if the developer failed. Could the city have done something about it prior to now? Sure, but we weren't here. I, I don't. Yeah, I think they could do the, they that the deferral. The deferral. Yeah. Yeah, I think they could do the deferral, so they may not ever have have to pay. Correct. They could run just a deferral anyway. Right. Just a reminder, Council, this was the discussion of why you reduced it from 300000 to 150000 as well. Correct, correct. And that's why I, I'm i really proud of the Council and the work sessions that we had to get to this point because this is a situation where I don't think there is a perfect answer. The compromise is what led us to, to hear from it being rural to now being city, the city standards versus what it exists as. And splitting it 50 50 you know I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of taxpayers that when things get done and they, they'd like to split it 50 50 with the city as well um, but when we said this is transitioning from rural to city they can pay for the rural portion we'll pay to the city the sidewalk the, the curb and the extra square footage we did the math that it honestly it worked out to like 48.9 or so it was almost 50 50 just naturally so we said that's a it just seemed like the right answer correct uh, and I liked what I'm most proud of is that it was a creative solution because I think sometimes we want to see things very black and white and we think the solution should be, well, if you're a rule follower, you say, well, the rules say the statute is 100% they pay because it's the first time around, they got to pay 100%. And these people paid 100%, so to be fair, we have, and I'm glad that we, we came up with a creative solution because it is a sticky situation. You're absolutely right. 2006, I don't, it's not to say that it wasn't our problem. We weren't here to be part of the solution in 2006. Uh, the, the, the project itself, um, the increased benefit, uh, trying to grow the community, open up the door uh, for Hardwood Estates and to grow the community itself, which maybe that was their intent in 2006, and then it just went away. And whether it be the developer that knew I'm going to take it, you know, all the way to here and then stop and walk away and sell it, and then all the agreements and everything that was agreed upon wasn't the responsibility of the next landowner or, or the next is. so I'm, I'm I gotta agree that I'm in favor of keeping it the way it is I, I know that it's uh, it feels burdensome um, if there's a deferral if there's a way that we can ease the burden uh, obviously but this project um, I see this project as progress and I, I know that sometimes that can be painful annexation in 2006 might have been painful Sounds like it was. 
sounds like they might have felt like they were done wrong. Um, but what cost of comment back then? Any other thoughts, comments from the council? Hearing none, uh, I would accept a motion to approve resolution 2744 adopting the assessment. So, motion by Gasby. Eric, can I have a clarification? Yes. Could you also state in that motion either uh, denying or approving of the objection? Sure. Denying. Okay. Motion to approve resolution 2744 while denying the appeal. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Laura. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Let's do a roll call vote on that just so that we have it down. Gasme? Aye. Girl? Aye. Jepson? Aye. Johnson? Upstate? Cronenberger? Aye. Lundell. Aye. Pass. 5-0. 5, zero. five. Okay. <clears throat> 5 Brings us to resolution 2745, receiving the bids and awarding the contract. Thank you, Mayor. So yep. this is the procedural step uh, to award the contract to Albright Construction. As I mentioned earlier, they are the contractor uh, for Hardwood Estates, which I think is good because then we'll have one contractor in and out. Uh, and as I mentioned, they do anticipate uh, weather, uh, Depending upon the weather, starting out pretty soon. Uh, nothing else, unless there's any questions. Sure. Questions, comments from the council? Hearing none, I'd seek uh, a motion to approve resolution 2745, receiving bids and awarding contract. So moved. Motion from Jepson. Second. Second from Grove. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Gets us to the consent agenda for tonight. Consent agenda items may be adopted under one motion as presented or may be removed for discussion and resolution as council business. I'll read them off real quick. Item A, just and correct claims for the accounting period that ended on April 11th, 2024. B, meeting minutes for April 2nd, 2024 city council meeting. C, resolution 2746, accepting an in-kind donation from the Cannon Falls Lions Club. Item D, approve the Cannon Valley Fair water truck usage request. Item E, approve pool caulking quote. Item F, Resolution 2747, accepting a batting cage donation from Cannon Falls Youth Athletic Association. Item G, approved 2024 event street closures. Item H, Resolution 2748, approving the variance for 510 Water Street East. Item I, Resolution 2749, approving variance for Ed Reimer. And item J, approved the State Road 20 construction detour. Anything that the council would like to move down to council business? D, D, you got it. Item D, the water truck usage will be council business C. Anything else from the council? Uh, hearing none, I would accept a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda. Motion from Gesme. Second. Second from Diane. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carries. Gets us to council business. The lead service line grant discussion. Jed, if you would like to take this one. All right, <clears throat> Council, uh, this is more just for your information than anything else, but uh, the EPA has passed a uh, lead line identification. You know, we need to know who has lead services so we can address that. So, uh, Department of Health is that uh, actually put out a grant. Um, instead of that grant coming through the city, it's actually going to the engineers. So, uh, WHKS, since they are our engineer, will uh, accept the grant money and do this on our behalf. So uh, I and my staff will be working with WHKS to identify all the lead services and um, uh, galvanized services um, and get all that, get a report into the, the EPA. Wonderful. And no action needed, just no information. Action. Thank you, Jeff. Diane, go ahead. No. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what I was reading, the state of Minnesota is highly encouraging all lead service lines to be replaced by 2033. 
and has additional one. I couldn't quite figure out if it's grant and or loan program to assist cities and water systems in doing that. Have we gotten on the list to apply for any of those and are we going to do that on Cannon Street as it, we're replacing the water main there, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, so the, the services are the homeowners, the homeowners own the services though. They're not um, the city services. We, the city only owns the, the, correct, the, the mains. So I don't know, maybe Bill has some more information on this as far as. Uh, most likely the state has said that they will come out with grants for individual property owners. Uh, but the first step is this, this inventory. Uh, we are not aware of any direct knowledge of any lead service lines, but I'm sure there are some uh, within the city. So um, after we go through this, so it's a couple steps. So first off, it's any home newer than 1985, that's the cutoff. They know they're not lead. <laughs> Okay. And then before that, if you actually have plans or specifications that say they're a copper, then they're exempt. Then whatever amounts left, we will send letters out in inventory, ask people to look, take a picture, upload it to a website, and then after we do that, whatever we left, then we'll go in people's homes and physically look at them if they will let us. If they won't let us, then we'll just mark them as unknown. If Cannon Falls never has, Cannon Falls has never had lead show up in their water sampling, if they would, then we would have to resolve all the unknowns. Or if we find some that have lead in them, what Neil and Jed and I have talked about is when those grants may become available, we will help citizens apply for them or we'll apply for them. And we don't know the rules yet. But uh, that's something we, we definitely want to get rid of those. And actually the, the little thing I listened to online from uh, Minnesota Department of Health and public facilities, whatever, <clears throat> said that this program is to replace, and it's through like the city, to replace both the private and the city-owned part. So it's not the homeowner that applies, it comes through the city working on that. And I just don't want us to miss out on that. Yep, so our, our deadline is July 15th. Uh, now, ironically, the state hasn't finished the grant agreements yet for uh, the, the, so what they're doing is they're, the Department of Health is directly hiring the city engineers across the state so that it doesn't have to go through the city. They thought that would be easier. Uh, but the agreements aren't uh, out yet. So we got a short period of time, we're going to hit it hard. But you're right, Diane, we're going to continue to work on that when the, the future grants come out. I mean, they already have 64 projects working on this right now within the state, uh, involving 42 cities with actual lead service replacement public, private, combined. Yeah, my assumption is those are cities that already knew they had some, so, yep. But, no, thanks for the information, any questions? All right, moving on to item B, resolution 2750, receiving bids and awarding contract for John Birch Park Improvements, Bill. All right, well, great news. Uh, we opened bids uh, for the uh, John Birch Park wall project, and uh, we had seven bids, which is quite a few. Uh, six of them were uh, higher than our estimate, and one was below. So uh, we're all heroes, right? As long as one is less. So, so the low bid was submitted in the amount of seven hundred thirty-four thousand five hundred dollars by Blake Burrow Hardscapes of, of Elko. Uh, as, I, I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned, our estimate was eight hundred thousand, so they are under a bid. Uh, half of this project is being paid for by a grant that. Laura is uh, slugging her way through uh, to, to get uh, completed. Uh, we have not worked with Blake Pearl Hardscapes, but uh, we've talked to them, looked at their website. Uh, they do a lot of large retaining walls like this. Uh, they have a lot of experience, so uh, we have no reason to believe uh, there will be any issues. Uh, they did want to point out that they said the concrete work, they hired a local contractor uh, to do that work. Uh, they did not tell us who it was. Maybe I wanted to wait until the was award tonight, but they did say they're trying to use local people as well. So I um, think that's all great. We did review this with the John Bar Bur sorry, John Perch Park Committee. Uh, they're actively involved with the design, so everybody's pretty excited to get going on this. Um, as far as uh, starting on this, June 17th was our start date. They can't start till after that. They're actually anticipating they probably wait till July 4th, uh, but June 17th will let us get uh, a couple of weeks of summer ball at the field. Down for the rest of the year. 
Uh, they will go into football season, uh, but we do have all our areas outside of the football field and everything. So, but concessions and all that, if you guys, you know, that'll be a little bit of a, that will be a little bit of a challenge for the football season. So, but, so with that, I recommend an approval of resolution uh, 2350, I'm sorry, 2750. Any questions or comments from the council? Yeah, it is. It's really exciting. Because uh, last weekend, I think there were four baseball games there. And then looking at the schedule, the Bears have all the games are in bold at home until about the middle of like Fourth of July, and then they're all away. So they've they've already planned appropriately, which is great. Um, super exciting. Uh, I would take a motion to approve Resolution Two Seven Five Zero, receiving bids and awarding the contract for John Birch. So moved. We're going to give the motion to Diane and the second to Jefferson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. That gets us to item C, the water truck usage for the fair. Mr. Okay. Uh, we came a little from mm -hmm. last meeting to get uh, proof of liability insurance on the operator CDL. Just wondering if that was carried through. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Jen, gotcha. Well, that's that's all I was going to ask. If you could have for use of water truck for the states. All right, so that's a motion. That's a motion. Motion from Steve. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Lundell. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carries. Gets us to our reports. Uh, we'll start off, Maggie's not here with the chamber. Uh, we'll go straight to EDA. Laura, if you would like to handle that one. Um, I just wanted to highlight that um, our active transportation committee met, and that, again, is to make our community more walkable and bikeable. Um, so we had our community committee meet last week and I just want to let um, anyone on camera know, hello, um, that uh, we are going to be having a link that we're gonna ask the community to engage with uh, so that they can identify areas of concern around the community. It's an interactive map, uh, they can put a little person where they find that there's areas within the community that they find is maybe a danger zone and also a bike they can drag onto the map um, where they also feel is an area of concern that they think should be identified. Um, but then we're also going to be having um, uh, a walking and a biking audit uh, later in June with our co with our committee <coughs> and um, that way we're going to be able to kind of do kind of a, a walk and a, a bike and stop talk with our community and our project leaders from MnDOT and that way we're going to be able to kind of like walk and talk and assess the different areas to identify how we're going to implement our temporary project and then ultimately then uh, uh, possibly right for a grant to do a permanent infrastructure change in the community. So I just want, we'll put it out on social media and then also probably in the beacon or whatever on our website when it's live to encourage the community to engage with that map because we want as much feedback as possible so that we can make sure that we include that in our study. So that's all I have to say about that. Okay. So the interactive maps can be on your website It'll be on the city website, um, on social media. We'll have a link to that interactive map, but it's very simple. You just, like I said, you can just drag a little person to where the walking um, areas are, or a bike, you just drag it to where um, you think that the biking issues are. So, um, And it's not trail related necessarily. It would be more amongst the community areas for our residents. All right, thank you, Laura. Uh, Public Works and Park Board. Thursday, May 2nd. That was May? April. First, yeah, April. April. Um, so everything was on the uh, consent agenda, except I don't think we talked about the fire muster. That'll be on at Hannah's Bend uh, June 15th. And we got our new swans about a week and a half ago. And uh, I guess they're doing good. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Finance Committee, we met. Uh, talking about looking forward to the 2025 budget with all the salary negotiations that happened. So, um, it, well, <laughs> looking into the future, maybe <laughs> instead of looking forward to. Uh, but I don't mind saying this. I know Neil's been very upfront with that. He's going to talk to department heads, and it's going to be a very tight year, and we're going to be 
four percent, and we're going to be uh, to the council. We are going to try to be very strict with that. Um, and that was most of the discussion. Uh, was there anything else on the finance committee that uh, should be reported? I think that was the majority of the discussion. There is part of a township we came to an agreement with the rural uh, the fire association for different townships in the area. And there were some parcels that wanted to leave, and that agreement that contract is a five year, and we just signed it this last August. So we discussed uh, how to figure out if we would allow those parcels to leave. It's down in the Denison area, um, and the Camp Falls Fire Department said that they still respond to some of the fires in that area, even if they're just there as backup for help. So um, it's tabled for now, but that, that was brought up at the meeting. All right, library board. Yep, they got their new mechanisms installed, so front doors and back doors are both very accessible and keep stitches up. All right. Uh, Planning Commission. Planning Commission we met on April 8th. Uh, got a couple items, uh, two variances, one for uh, Thank you, Steve. Uh, Police Commission uh, met on April 9th, talked about uh, cannabis, and as a community, we're trying to stay up to date with what's going to happen when it is legal to sell. Um, and so that was the majority of the discussion with the Police Commission. Uh, we'll go around the horn here. Jed, anything else like that? Um, yeah, where you are flushing hydrants still this week. So far, so good. Um, probably couldn't tell today. Uh, they have started. We're going to start construction on the uh, Cannon and Third. We have uh, Gas Main is actually going to be going on Third while he's working on Cannon. It's going to be a mess. Uh, so we encourage people to go around, please. Uh, we will leave the the uh, Kyle the soup wants to leave the bridge open as long as possible, uh, just because it is a main. You know, artery, but um, when they start digging, he will close the bridge down. And that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, anything else? You know, just one more thing to add on the John Birch part. Yeah. I, you guys have a really great group of volunteers that have worked on that, and uh, I, I, it's pretty rare to have a group as dedicated as, as the people working on that. And I was trying to make sure I pulled up all their names, uh, but uh, Keith Myers, Aaron Winchell, Bucky Lindau. Uh, Rich, uh, or yeah, Rich Bird, uh, and if I'm forgetting somebody, I apologize. But uh, boy, they've attended a lot of meetings and done a lot of hard work, and it's pretty impressive to see a group that actively involved. So, and also then Laura, thanks again for uh, she's handling all the grant stuff, which is no small uh, task. So that's it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Zach. Anything, uh, Laura? All right. No, nothing. All right, Sarah. I just wanted to let you know that we have our audit next week. Michelle and I have been working very hard to prepare for that. So um, you guys will see results probably in June when the auditors will come and present that. Thank you. Laura. Nope. Lisa. No, I had to make it. Ryan. Nope. Derek. Diane. See you. Nope. Uh, I've got a couple of things. I'll try to be quick. Uh, first, uh, thoughts and prayers are with Neil uh, and his family. He's not here tonight because a uh, family member has passed away, so our thoughts and prayers are with him. Uh, the Cannon Falls Education Foundation, the auction event was this weekend. Thank you, Diane. It was good to see you there. Uh, so much fun uh, to have events like that. And a friend said to me, those are the types of events that, that make communities. So to see people there, uh, Laura, it was a very good time. Uh, it's nice to see people active in the community for a good cause. We talked about non-traditional learning experiences. The robotics team is going to a world competition in Houston, Texas. They went to Duluth a few weeks ago. They did well enough. They've been invited to the world. Uh, that's 
that's pretty cool. Those, those are things that events like this, organizations like this raise money so that our students can do that. So uh, I just want my generation and, and even those younger, um, if you've got kids in elementary school and stuff, you can be on the PTO, that's wonderful, but also Ed Foundation, it's a great event. Uh, it's a great organization uh, to allow kids to, to do things that some school districts simply don't have this opportunity. So we should be grateful for that. Uh, and then also just, uh, you know, proud of our town. This last weekend, for whatever reason, it just seemed like things were buzzing. Downtown, was, there were a lot of people, the bike trail, uh, people were all over the place. I walked in and got to see Lisa and have a little chat. Um, it's nice to see the foot traffic. It's nice to see our downtown feel busy again. Uh, even though it was such a soft winter, uh, so many of the businesses have been saying it's just been slow. I feel like we're kind of waking up from that, uh, from the slow times. So, um, yeah. Uh, with that, I would find a motion to adjourn. So moved. Diane, second from Derek. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.